You're listening to Artificium Occulte Venatores, a Shadowrun actual play podcast by Relative Dimension. All right, so according to the recap document, you guys met with Scorpion, who is a fixer in Tunis. She arranged to get you guys clothing and transportation and a house and a Toyota Talon to rent. Um, 3000 a week for the pair. If you're finished early, uh, within the week, 600 new yen is deducted. If it goes over the week, then 500 new yen per day, up to three. Uh, days four to, sit, four to seven make it a full second week's price. So if you do, say, eight days, it's 3500 3500 uh, You guys got the truck or SUV, some flashlights, battery-powered stand lights, miscellaneous archaeological tools. Oh, I should probably find my notebook where I took all my notes. Uh-huh. I believe in the back of the SUV there was a bunch of shovels and hammers and picks and sledges and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Digging as well as archaeological gear. I should probably open up. See, we got there on July 2nd, right? That's when all the gear and stuff showed up. Say that again? Uh, sorry. <clears throat> the July 2nd is when we got all that gear, right? That's what I have written down anyway. So we're on Saturday. I think that is right. Because we met with Scorpion on the 1st, got the clothes to fit in and whatnot, and then had the discussion, and then like the next day is like, okay, well, here's all the shit you asked for. <laughs> if I remember right. Actually, I think you were in town on the 1st, because you got paid. Yeah, we met with Scorpion on the 1st. And then you left um, that day, yeah, so that night. And she put you up in her room because it was going to take a day to get all the stuff. So it's probably getting there Saturday night. So you'll probably be getting to um, the other city, El Gem, Sunday. If you left that night, if you know, you can wait until Sunday and go and stuff like that too. I don't know if there's anything else you guys wanted to do while you were in town. I don't think so. I didn't have anything. Oh, I'm good. And I think on the map, the house that you were going to get was like somewhere in that area. Okay. Oh, nope. I had already circled it on a different map. It's further down. But my direction was right. So who's driving down there? Provided it's not difficult driving, Marigold can manage. By which I mean she can buy one hit. I can give somebody an increased reaction to drive if necessary. And as you said, as long as it's not difficult, I think I can actually pull off buying a hit. So unless somebody else wants to drive, I mean Marigold will offer probably. Especially if everyone kind of stands around going, okay, well who's going to drive? Be like... Yeah, Elk can drive too. I mean, it's a small town with like uh, that Middle Eastern motif. And the question is, who's driving? I mean, our basic job is not to mow people down when we drive through these narrow streets, right? Okay, so Marigold's yeah, driving. Just, okay, Marigold's driving. The um the drive down there is not horribly long. It's um, I think it was around two hundred kilometers. So it takes you a few hours. Were you doing this Saturday night or Sunday morning? Whenever anybody else wants to go, Marigold doesn't sleep much. Morning sound good. All right, mornings. In that case, damn computer, Marigold. Mm-hmm. Okay. Give me a roll to see if you got any sleep last night. Mm-hmm. Uh, one moment. What's her dice pool on? Are you okay. at the ten or the fifteen level? Uh, 10. The 15 level is death. She slept rather well. Okay, she met the threshold, so she slept. (laughs) Okay. So if you're down a point of edge, you can have a point of edge back. Um, It's actually nice and and, um, bright here on a good night's sleep. Everything seems a lot more energetic than it was for you the night, the day before. So there is... is... Go ahead. (laughs) So this is about as close to peppy as Marigold gets, is what you're saying. Yeah. Um, There is a lot of livestock going through the highways and stuff that you have to avoid. People leading stuff uh, across highways, sometimes down lanes. 
There is a lot of motorbikes, uh, more of the scooter variety than heavy motorcycles. Occasionally, Jeeps and stuff are driving along because they don't really have to worry too much about the road. They can go on the shoulder and off-road and stuff like that. As you get, uh, say, an hour out of town, there is a lot of tents start popping up on the sides of the road. Mm -hmm. And at first it may seem kind of puzzling, but after passing through a few, you start to notice that they seem to be fan tents. So it's tailgating, but for... uh... Desert Wars, yes. Thank you. I forgot the name. (laughs) I was looking it up. And you also notice this as you pass other towns on the way here. They seem to congregate around um, population centers. Probably for the local amenities, but then they don't have enough actual rooms to service everybody, so they camp on the outskirts. All right. And about an hour after that, you guys get to El Gem. The uh, probably not quite afternoon yet, there are a lot of... um, The street shops are open. There are a lot of street vendors lining the roads, selling various foodstuffs and and souvenirs, clothing, other miscellaneous things that you might buy. A lot of it seems geared towards everyday life, but there are a few things that are geared towards the desert war scene that is there. And once you guys are in town, where are you heading to? Um, did we have a vague area of town? Of I know it's not in, it's under the town, uh, supposedly, but... Do we have an idea of where at? Uh, was it mostly to Joe? Because I didn't. I don't have it in my notes. Um, they were estimating, and I lost my circle again. I'm pretty. I thought I had a circle here for this. Uh, they were estimating, or guessing rather, that it was underneath the forum. Okay. Let me add my circle again. So they didn't have any proof and no hard evidence, but. From what they were telling you, there was a few vague hints that people got that led them to believe that the forum was built on top of where the library would have been. Okay. Where exactly were they hiding? Were they doing the uh, Desert Wars? Further south. Okay. South. Okay. So there's El Gem circled, and the X and stuff is down where the closest... um, war arena is, I guess. Okay. So that shouldn't be any problem for us. Marigold shouldn't be the one doing this planning, I'm just saying. Yeah, um... So if somebody else wants to chime in, that's got more than two logic. <laughs> well, okay, alright. Okay. Well, we have a house that Marigold's could... suggestion would be, why wait? Let's just get this fucker done. Now, coming from Rome, there are some similarities. The amphitheater here looks like a slightly smaller version of the amphitheater in Rome. Uh, Very similar construction. But yes, you guys had a house that you were renting? Yeah, um, I guess we can stop in there and just check in. You guys are coming into town from uh, the northwest, and the house is located in the southwestern sector-ish direction. Yeah, I mean, might as well get our... I don't know. That'll be our staging ground, basically. So Yeah, that's why I was like, might as well at least get a feel for the land uh, around um, it and stuff. On the outskirts, as you guys come in, um, I don't know if you can see it very well on this map here, but it looks like uh, patterned farmland. There's lots of olive groves, olive trees and stuff further out. And as you get, you know, before you get to the actual town itself... There's lots of farms, people working the farms, irrigating the olives and stuff stuff like that out there. Okay, interesting. Um, we'll just continue on to the house for the moment. Okay. Um, people watch you as you drive through town. Um, in this particular town, there are not as many automobiles as there are in some of the other ones. Um, there are several people that are riding camels down the streets. And there are places like outside of storefronts and bars and things like that that will have camels tied up. And some of those will be right next to a Yamaha Growler. 
getting to the house. Um, it is not entirely isolated. It is a, a bit on the larger side for the area, but there is a building, a few buildings across the street and on a side street. This kind of takes up a corner lot. There is a little bit of privacy with a wall around it, but you'd have to go through efforts to hide everything you were doing. Yeah, it's okay. Is there a place to park the truck? There is. There is a gate with a uh, number pad. You were given the code for the gate. Okay. So opening it up is fairly easy. There is, um, on this gate that goes around the building, there is a smaller personal gate uh, by the front door leading up to it. It doesn't seem as secure as the one you actually drive in and out of. But yes, you can park the vehicle. It looks as though the windows are open. Any curtains have been drawn to uh, allow circulation and stuff. So somebody has recently been here to at least prepare it. So hmm. I guess we're unloading our shit? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know. Uh, Unless somebody's paranoid and thinks we're being set up and wants to, you know. Yeah. You mean we're not being set up? We should always believe we're being set up. That's just how it works. No, um, well, large, largely most of it can stay in the truck in the first place. I mean, there's nothing that we need to remove, I imagine, that because we're probably going to be using it, at least some of it, soonish. I mean, if y'all want to get a feel for the land, and you want to look like we're here for the wars, then, I mean, the digging equipment and shit we got back there kind of don't fit that. Yeah, all right, let's put it in the house. So we'll unload and, and find a place in the house to kind of sit, sit it all down, take inventory of it, and blah, blah, blah. Um, There's definitely places for that. Um, the beds are a little more than cots, basically. Ooh, so they're fancy cots. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, they're not quite beds, is what I'm saying. They are mobile, so you can move them around. It looks like right now they are placed... Um, spaced out and to make a maximum effect of any breezes going through the house. Okay. All right. So we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be dressed up in our, in our wars gear and stuff and, uh, and go exploring the, the town, especially the area around where we want to dig. Sound good to everybody? Yeah. Are you going to walk around or drive around? How far How away, away the location from where, I mean, like the area that we need to, that we uh, that we believe the um, locate uh, the library thing is at. It's, it's not too far. We can walk. Let's see if I can get a scale. Uh, probably about half a mile. Yeah, half a mile is well doable. We can walk that. Walking's fine. Not only that, but it'll make it easier to spot if we're being followed or. Yeah. Yeah. A good walk might be good for us. All right. So who speaks? Uh, what was it? Arabic. I do. I do as well. But neither of you had the Tunisian dialogue. Uh, the, I think uh, I did. Hold on. El Gem. Yeah, I speak it, but I don't have that dialect. Uh, I speak it naturally, and so does El, so there's that. Uh, I'm only rolling... Oh, only. Sorry. I have nine dice for it. I speak the dialect. I learned it. I figured if I need to be talking to people, I should speak the dialect. Okay. Um, do you guys have your languages listed on your character sheets? Uh, did I move this one? Hold on. Let me see if I move this one, because I just got it last time. You need to know all of them, Eric? I want to look and see if something is present. Um, Marigold has English, German, Greek, and Italian. Okay. And aside from English, it's one rank <laughs> in the other three, so. Yes. There. All, all mine are listed on my roll 20 character sheet. Yeah, okay, it looks like yeah. mine are as well. I just put the Tunisian in there for the... I put street as the specialty, because I didn't didn't really have a specialty, but... So, it's like, okay. And I put the description of the Tunisian in there. So, there you go. That work? Yes. All right, so as you're walking around, um, people start to call out to you and ask you guys questions and chatter at you, and none of you seem to understand a word of what they're being spoken. Oh, so they're not speaking the... No, they don't seem to be speaking Arabic at all at first. They seem to be, uh, after a moment of looking at you, they start off in French. Oh, do none of us know French? I think I suppose not. 
I thought I did, but that's a different character, I guess. <laughs> French isn't an important language. I will speak the dialect to them and see if they respond. Sorry, I don't know French. Yeah, it doesn't seem like anybody knows French. Really? Didn't, they didn't list French as one of the options. Jerks. Um, when you speak that to them, though, they uh, pause and start talking. And um, wh- how many ranks do you have in it? Just one or two? Um, three, I think. Hold on. Uh, well, no, four. Look at that. I was, I was, I was big on it. Okay, so you pick it up relatively quickly. It is a a dialect you're not too used to, but you have uh, studied a little bit of it. So it's not. There are certain words that do mean something in other dialects, but you can easily get the context of it. And they're asking you uh, um, if you guys are hungry. Would you like to try some of what they are offering? You know, to eat. Uh, clothing, even though you have clothing that is was um, provided by the fixer for the area, they seem to be offering you things that uh, they claim are much more suited to the climate. Oh, of course, of course, of course they do. Uh, yeah. So, so basically, they 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 believe us tourists and trying to sell us stuff that we don't need. Okay. Yes. I see. I will uh, uh, politely say, uh, no, thank you. We are we are fine. We are just exploring the landscape. Um, there are a few places that you pass by that do have English signs. Um, some places have Japanese signs. Okay, so they're catering to the uh, trying to cater as much as they can to the uh, to to the tourists. Yeah, we we should have thought they were going to do that actually. But oh well, moving on. Um, even some of the permanent locations do have okay. some signs in different languages as well. Very cool. Um, you pass by a, um, a stuffer shack. Of course. But why, why wouldn't we find a stuffer shack way out here in the middle of nowhere? They're literally everywhere. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like, okay. You can't Pretty throw... Sure there's a... probably one on Mars. Yeah, you can't throw a rock at a stuffer shack without hitting another stuffer shack. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that one's good. I like that one. Uh, look, I, I'm not. I did not come all the way out here to eat at a at a stupid stuffer shack. We are going to find something more. I don't know. Interesting. To Marigold. Eat. Marigold to stop in and grab a burrito or two. Really? Really? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. What can I say? She's born in the Redmond Barrens. <laughs> I I will ask some of the locals what what are what some of the uh, the more unique restaurants are in the area. That would be what they, they would suggest. Eld likes eating out, but not while he's on a job. And he's used to stale coffee and noodles, so Stuffer Shack's fine. Yeah. Uh, give me a, uh, what would this be? Charisma plus Perception. Oh, that's a weird one. Okay, hold on. Perception? Perception there, Charisma, okay. Five. You get the the impression real soon that they seem to be limiting what they're offering you based on what they think your taste might be like. At least the people you're passing on the streets. Huh. Okay. Yeah, you gotta get somebody local, local, not these vultures. <sighs> oh well. Um, alright. That's fine. Everyone's eating a stuffer shack. Well, I'll eat a stuffer shack. It's fine. And then on a uh, like a um, What's the word? A segue. Only the tires have seemed to be uh, reinforced for some off-road driving. Nothing major, <laughs> but for dirt and stuff like that. What looks like probably a 12-year-old kid comes rolling up to you guys. Mm. And he was coming from the direction that you guys were walking from. Okay. And he stops and he looks at you guys. You, I, you, I am sent to guide you. Sent by whom? He kind of looks around. Uh, this is not the best place to speak the name. I was at your house. I was I was the one that prepared it for you yesterday. Uh, okay. Did we talk about a guide? Yeah. I don't recall. Wait, wait, did we? Wait, we did. We did ask for a local guide. Hold on. I remember talking about a guide, didn't we? I don't did remember if you we? did or not. <sighs> I don't see it in my notes. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, but it's possible I forgot to write it down. That is, is 
what, what is there a role to like whether or not to trust this guy or not? I can't remember. Judge intentions. That's it. Yeah, I knew there was one. It wasn't working. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what this kid's intentions are. Where's my judge intentions? Ah, oh, there it is. Marigold gives him the side eye while munching on a burrito. I got four. He seems pretty genuine. He doesn't have any like uh, of the signs of shifty eyes or anything like he's trying to deceive you. All right. All right. Where do you suggest we go next, then? Guide. Oh, oh what's your name? What are you looking for? Well, what's your name? Is, that's going to be weird. What, what, of course, I forgot to write that down. He doesn't need a name, clearly. <laughs> Hold on. I don't like any of those. I'm going to call him Bob here. Call him George. I like George better than Bob. Leon. All right, Leon. Lead on, Leon. Uh, what we're, Oh, he asked where we where what we'd like to see. Right. Well, okay. Are we? Um, what what did we say was uh, over top of this library? What was it again? The forum. Some... Yeah. Can we see the forum? Oh yes. This way. This way. Thank you. Are you hungry? Uh, we just ate the stuffer shack. We'll we'll uh, we'll we'll uh, I'll ask you about that for dinner. Munch, munch, munch. He kind of gives gives you guys a disparaging look. Uh, something wrong. No, at the site of the Stuffer Shack stuff. Oh. Hey, don't judge. Stuffer Shack's the same no matter where you go. Wait, is it the same no matter where you go? Is there something it's, we should know about stuffer the Stuffer Shack. Shack? It's so bland. Oh, well, yes, yes, we, we do know this. And I know it ain't going to have anything weird in it that'll make me sick. It doesn't have any flavor in it either. I've eaten worse. It doesn't need flavor, apparently. I, I, I'll talk to you about that later. Um, he starts rolling down the street. Um, not so fast. You guys can easily keep up with him. I'm going to say, segways don't go very fast, do they? They go a little faster than walking speed, but he's keeping his down to walking speed. How nice. Um, as you go, he's pointing out um, certain sites of interest. There aren't many on this street. Um, okay. he, he generally talks about... Um, like, this location is a good spot if you want clothing or whatever. However, there is much better, and he names a street or a location that doesn't really make sense at the moment to you guys. And then this place over here is run by the daughter of his best friend's uh, sister, who, who makes uh, some type of cuisine that's much better than this one here. You want to, you know, go elsewhere. Oh, okay. And you guys do pass a small museum on the way, uh, a place that sells um, segways like his, as well as scooters. We could all get a segway. That would just look ridiculous, though. And then you guys hear something very loud and obnoxious coming from off to the side. And a moment later, there is a huge, well, not huge, a large... Uh, gopher toyota gopher it's got a roll bar in the bed there's several people hanging out of it a few of them orcs um and they seem to be dressed in uh desert war themed jerseys uh not the team you guys decided to follow okay and they are shouting and cahooting and stuff like that as they drive across your path and off to the side um Driving rather recklessly, but they don't seem to hit anything. They do swerve at the last moment several times, though. So they're oh. just morons. Yeah. Shall, shall I end this bad experience, sir? What? No. Okay. Oh, we have to put up with that often. Uh, no, no, that's, that's understandable. It, uh, they're having fun, apparently. I'm so vocal. I could forebode them and scare the crap out of them. Well, let's uh, look. Let them do what they're going to do. Low profile. And then he leads you up to the forum. Uh, there is a... From this direction, he leads you up to... There's kind of like a stairway. So there is a fence around outside of it. It looks like it is not just open and accessible to the public all the time. Um, there are people stationed nearby, and it does seem like people lead tours in and out. You neat. Is it pretty busy around the area? It is busy, yes. Okay, so clearly a common, a pretty common place for tourists and stuff, right? Yes. Okay. 
And for people watching the stream, I'm going to put it up there. Yeah, there you go. Hmm. How do we get one of the tours? I'll ask the Leon. Leon. Yeah, took me a moment. Uh, there is an office. He kind of points um, down the street slightly. You can join a tour there and pay for it. They they have them several times a day. Hmm. A tour sounds very interesting. Let's sign up for it, and then we can do a little walk around the area until our time is up, uh, ready to go do the tour. Sound good? Yeah, he leads you to the tour office. Okay. Yeah, how much is a tour? Negligible. Ah, okay. <laughs> the next available tour will be at 2 in the afternoon. It's probably about 11 now. Okay, so time enough to do a little bit exploring around it, the area, so that's fine. Yes. Um... Ask Leon to give us a little tour around the entire structure. Um, kind of getting a feel for maybe which side of it look, seems the the least likely to generate a whole bunch of you know tourists and you know I mean, the more of the downtrodden areas if not if there isn't if there is one. Um, yeah, I would also like to um, ask him if there's any other ruins or something like that in the city somewhere. You know something like this, but maybe not as big for the tourists uh, there are a few places that have old buildings that have not lasted well but this is the most famous it is said that only the ah, I closed it I forgot the name only the, the amphitheaters in Rome and Capua are larger hmm. he leads you around um, that is where the tour office is kind of outside of the what is that? It's not a courtyard, but where the steps kind of lead down to it. But out, outside of that. And he kind of takes okay. you around um, counterclockwise. There are here a lot more touristy style businesses. And uh, also a lot more um, cuisine that you can find that are not of this region. Okay. So a lot of uh, very things that are popular in the barrens or in uh, major cities across the world. So if you don't want local cuisine, you can come here and find something from just about wherever you may be from. Okay. Um, coming around the corner over here, it looks like this section is a walled off what used to be a garden or a, a training field perhaps at one time or a staging area. So it is also fenced off with the wrought iron fence. There does seem to be cameras monitoring it. Um, and then he takes you around the, the corner over here, and it looks like there's a, a, in this area, there's a lot of very small residences that aren't um, very modern. They may have one time been a lot of the personnel that worked in and around the forum when it was a functional thing back in the day. Okay. And as far as security goes, the outside of it is not ultra secure. The uh, the wrought iron fences are at most like five or six feet tall. So it wouldn't take much effort to get up and over them. There are cameras scattered around. It looks like they, there have been um, not exactly mounted on the walls of the forum itself, but almost like drone camera emplacements that are... Um, grappling on so that they could be removed or placed without causing much harm to the exterior. Hmm. Okay. All right. So we'll, uh, we'll capture some images of this. Um, and we'll see what we can figure out entrance wise later. Um, and on one of these touristy stands here, they're selling trids of um, gladiator movies. <laughs> Yes! I have to get a gladiator movie. Also, um, chariot races. And it doesn't take much. You learn that this style of amphitheater was built with the uh, outer track. So there were a lot of horse and chariot races back in the day. Fun. Okay. Are there paranormal horses that were part of something like that? They don't mention anything, no. It has a... Cool. I just think it would have been cool to see some, like, nightmares pulling uh, chariots around. Yeah, it hasn't been a functioning... Uh, there hasn't been an actual chariot race here since pre-awakening. 
although you guys do learn um, that somebody is proposing a renovation of it, clearing out all of the tunnels and chambers underneath where they would at one time house the animals that people might fight against in some of those types of arena combat. Since this arena does have those pull away doors that actually lead down into the underground. Hmm. Someone's uh, so right now it's just like under the the plan is kind of thing. It's a plan thing. Yeah, somebody's pushing for it. Oh, okay. So it's not implemented if, as of yet. If desert wars are such a thing, why not live combat again in the arena? Makes sense to me. People would once fill the stands to watch people fighting lions. Why not basilisks? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hell yeah. I would have thought bar guests would have been more fun, but I guess audience-wise it would be a problem. Yeah, you don't want your audience fleeing in terror. That's why you have everybody sign a waiver and just bar the doors. <laughs> It'll be fine. We are not liable part of the for deaths due to trampling. <laughs> no children allowed. <laughs> well, it uh, depends on the corp, actually. Look, even if you say that, someone's bound to bring a child. Yeah, well, uh, you shouldn't have, then. We're not liable. <laughs> um, okay, all right, so at least we got that information down. That's interesting. Leon recommends a place for lunch that's not too far away, but it is actually local. I look at the others. They're the ones that were kind of against it. I mean, Marigold's was just because it was there. Oh. I'm not against it. L is it's fine with, you know, stuff for shop. Not a big deal. Yeah, we'll, we'll take Leon's suggestion. As much as we're playing uh, game fans, L is not here as a tourist. He's on job. He takes you past a few places that have signs in many different languages that name something as best voted restaurant in the Mediterranean, best voted restaurant in Tunis, you know, that type of thing in Tunisia. And he takes you to what looks like a, a small house. And he parks his Segway and walks in. And it, it's the main rooms have been converted to actually have tables. And it does smell good in here. Yum. All right. Take a seat. Let's get food. I recommend the seafood. Why? It is what this place specializes in. It is very oh. good. Where do they get the seafood from? He looks at you, puzzled. Never mind. Of the ocean, no, obviously. Okay. Yes. Let's get the seafood. <laughs> Let, let's move on. Where do they get the seafood from? They're only like ten miles away from the ocean. Yeah, I know. Or the sea, rather. Yeah. Man, yeah, Marigold's up for it. Why not seafood? Sure. Wouldn't trust the seafood from a stuffer shack, but you know. And mm. what what he points out is all locally caught, um, locally prepared. It's, it's uh, Some of the spices are a little different than you're used to, but nothing overwhelming. Okay, cool. When it came to anything questionable, he erred on the side of more bland rather than more spiced. Ah, just to be on the safe side, right? Yeah. And it's a long, slow dinner, the uh, or lunch, rather. The uh, proprietor is the owner of the, the house. She actually lives in the building. When it's not open for business, they close out down, down the uh, these rooms here with all the tables, and they live in separate rooms out off the back. She has uh, she's very talkative, hard to understand though. Even with the dialect, a lot of words slip by, but you kind of get the gist that she's been doing this for like 30, 40 years. Hmm. Okay. And she is the one that cooks and prepares everything. So she'll bring out a dish, and then, you know, it's almost uh, like a multi-course type format. They'll bring something out, let you have time to eat it and finish it, and then take it back and then bring something else out type of thing. So you can easily pass the time up to your tour here. All right, yeah, we'll do that, and then we'll hit up the tour. Um, he thanks the gracious lady. Well, I will, Thank you, uh, gracious lady. I will also, you know, give chitter-chatter about the team and stuff like that, just in case and anyone's over over listening. We'll, we'll talk about our team. Okay. Um, who has the lowest edge present? Nobody ever wants to say. 
I have four, so it's probably not me. Yeah, I have three. Yeah, L is three as well. I think it's me. I think I have two. Yep, I got two. Okay, roll two dice. But he gets a success, so it's all good. Um, Leon is... Obviously, your team is not his team. But your team is not one of the ones that he is against either. He's kind of slightly neutral to slightly favorable to the team you guys are talking about. Right. Well, they're, they're also the under one of the underdog teams, so they're probably not a threat to whatever team he has. So, Yeah. I mean, he's not like one of the ones that looks at you like, oh my god, how do you support that team die? Right. So our team isn't his team, but our money is definitely his type of money. Yes. And then once the meal is done, he, he leads you back outside, gets on his Segway, and rolls up to the uh, tour office where people are checking in at the office for the two o'clock tour. The, um, a person comes out after everybody checks in. Uh, for the tour, we have special shoes that everybody should wear to allow traction in some of the places that are a bit more worn and decayed, but also that won't leave, and he kind of chuckles to himself obnoxiously, a footprint behind. And most people groan, some people don't laugh at all. But he does bring out almost like um, general purpose soft boots for everybody. They're not exactly one size fits all, but they're not super tailored either. And then after everybody has that on, they have a place to lock your shoes up or to keep your shoes rather on the tour. He brings out um, almost like a, a trench coat, but a lot lighter and breezier. Uh, also wear these. Occasionally uh, dust and debris can be dislodged and this way none of your clothing will be ruined if anything happens to brush against it. Oh, there you go. And everybody seems to be, you know, putting them on. Uh, now, if you will follow me. We follow. The amphitheater was built in the early 3rd century AD. Thistris, as the city was known then, rivaled Hadrum Had Hadrumatum, uh, which is now known as Sus. It was the second city of Roman North Africa, after Carthage. And he starts giving you a history lesson in there. Marital's uh, eyes glaze over. When there was a report and some leader committed suicide near Carthage and Roman troops kind of uh, destroyed the city. And you know, and he leads you in through the entrance and uh, through the um, archways and stuff and up into a section of the stands that still seems to be rather well maintained so that you can actually look down into the center of the arena and stuff. Hmm. In its heyday, this was capable of seating 35,000 spectators. And he lists about, you know, when it was built and who the emperor was. Uh, the emperor of Thistris at the time was proconsul Gorgian. And he talks about how, you know, it's a nice tourist location by people that want to see what they were like back in the day when lions ate people as judgment and trials and stuff. A lot of it has crumbled. There are sections that are uh, blocked off and gated so that you have to be maintenance or employee or whatever to get into it. Uh, the tour, this area is rather open so that you can walk around this section of the the stands. Hmm. Okay. Uh, much of the the construction material and he points to places where there's just like walls that are gone was carried off to create uh, other buildings nearby or it is also possible that sections were not finished nobody really knows for sure uh, we have found um, some of the building materials in nearby buildings do match but no one knows if it was actually finished or not and then he kind of leads you down and into the floor of the arena itself, where large portions of it are available to be walked on, walk, walked by the public. Uh, you can tell, perhaps, by the uh, shape of the outer um, edge of the arena, it almost looks like modern racetracks because they did uh, chariot races here at times and other horse races. However, they did use it for combat as well. And he kind of leads you over to show you a place where one of the 
trap doors can be slid away and it is partially opened. Um, not enough for anybody to really fit down into. Uh, down here we suspect is one of the places where they housed the lions. Underneath there are several cages uh, that have not weathered well the ages, but evidence suggests that that's where some of the well, animals that were used during the arena combat were kept. Uh, on the other side there are chambers where we believe perhaps slaves were kept for combat as well and staging areas. Uh, he's does just pointing have those. Any questions? Yeah. Is he just pointing those out? Yes, he's pointing those out. He's pointing oh, out okay. the one with the animals because that one's partially opened, and then oh, okay. he, he motioned to the other side where the slave pens were. Can we go down and see the area? Uh, right now, it is not safe. However, uh, we do have a local politician that is trying to push for the restoration of the under sides. If it, if it goes through, if it is approved, probably in the next two to three years, it will be ready for the public. Hmm, okay. Interesting. Is this, um, has there been uh, a lot of like archeological work done in this area? Uh, some places in the surrounding areas. Anything that connects to like this or, you know, just, uh, just curious about the history, the local history. Uh, there is a museum and he gives you the name of a road where local artifacts have been found are on display. Nothing that we know of dates back to the forums. Um, there are, I am led to believe, underneath places still where some old weapons have decayed. Nothing has been restored yet, but it is a very hazardous place at the moment. Besides natural debris and some places with unstable foundations, um, collapsed hallways, which is why it will take a few years if this passes before we can make it ready for the public. Ah. Anyone else have questions? Um, a few other people have questions. Someone asks about if they still do live combat or whatever. Oh, no, not yet. Um, again, that is something that they are pushing for. Uh, if it holds popular, it may happen. Uh, with Desert Wars being in the area, it is a likelihood... However, then you have to get around all the organizations that are against using animals in combat as well. So it will depend on if there is any corporate sponsorship and who that happens to be. There's some nodding and, oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> well, if you will follow me, then I'll show you the next area. And they, the tour goes on for about two hours. Um, they lead you through other places that are still available for the public. Um some of the above ground staging areas and places where the important people would watch from instead of the general public. Okay, cool. So a lot of it is open area. Um, getting inside, if you got over the fence, you would be able to move around a lot. There's a lot of open area and you guys do notice that there are cameras, you know, watching the main arena floor and the, uh, I guess, VIP boxes, viewing boxes, and stuff like that. I wonder if those are closed circuit or not. Do you ask? Uh, I don't know if I want to ask this guy. That's kind of weird. Um, oh, you know what? This is how I ask. Um, I noticed the cameras. Is there a problem with like crime or anything like that around here? Crime? No, not necessarily. But with the sensitive nature of the structure, uh, there have been vandals in the past at times, so we want to make sure that the uh, the f amphitheater remains a viable place to visit for future generations. Ah, I, I see. Um, you know what, I can... Wait, is Solomon with us? Of course he is, right? Nobody has tried talking to him recently. Yeah, that's right. Or since you got here. Uh, I'll, I'll send a message to Solomon. Are you around? Uh, you get a message back of maybe about a minute later. Always just a text message away. Can you see if these cameras are on some sort of closed circuit or is it something we can manipulate easily? Um, make me a perception check visual, Mr. or Mrs. Asura there. I should probably be able to tell myself, but I'm lazy. Um, the wrong screen. Uh, oh, wait, it's still attached to it. It was logic, right? Or is it intuition? Yes. Intuition, intuition um, right? Yeah, intuition. 
Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. How sad. Just one. Okay. Um, about a minute later, you get a comlink message that says, uh, act like you are taking pictures with your comlink. Sure. I will start taking some photos or act like I'm taking photos. And about uh, maybe 30 seconds later, they are uh, running. They are slaved to a host, I believe. The icons are not visible. However, there is a host that is visit, uh, visible. If you were able to get up close and plug a cord into one of those wires, I could tell for sure. But other than that, I think the uh, they may be gotten into via the host. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I I will um, you know take some other photos as well. Actually, um, didn't think about that, but yes. Well, we're recording most of it. All right, fair enough. I'm I'm good. Okay. Yeah, nothing else I can think of at the moment. A lot of other people are taking pictures too, and then uh, the tour finishes. Dun, dun, dun. All right. So they lead you back out into the tour office where you can give up your clothing protection dusters and put your shoes back on. And they do have some other touristy type stuff: a history of the amphitheater, a history of El Gem things like that um small models of the amphitheater how cute snow globes um i am good thank you i don't think we need any of that also a donation box with a message that says donations from people like you are what helps to keep us uh, able to maintain the structure well i will toss in something donate you know make us proud um okay uh, maybe we should check out that um, museum. I don't think it's got. It may not have anything worth it, but you never know. Leon uh, did not go on the tour with you. Okay. He was waiting at the tour office. And when you come back out, since it's been a couple hours, he seems to be uh, talking with somebody, um, shaking his head, nodding, um, making some some gestures. Uh, and then he, he stops and waits. And uh, as you guys come and walk up to him, he's, he um, says something in French. And the person responds in French and then turns and walks away. Ah, how did you like the tour? Very interesting. Marigold yawns. Clearly not for all of us. Ah, I see. What would you like to do next? I don't look at Marigold. What would you like to do next? Did you say you looked at Marigold? Yeah. She Yawn. gives a blank stare in return. Oh. Uh, mm. Just that kind of unamused. Just I'm not even going to deign that with a response look. All right. Well, you don't have anything. We can go to the museum because I know you're going to love that. Oh, yes. History. My favorite subject. I will... It might give us useful information, though. I fell, Leon. To the museum! Put me to sleep first. The Topps Company, Inc. has sole ownership of the names, logos, artwork, marks, photographs, sounds, audio, video, and or any proprietary material used in connection with the game Shadowrun. The Topps Company, Inc., has given permission to Relative Dimension to use such names, logos, artwork, marks, and or any proprietary materials for promotional and informational purposes on its website, but does not endorse and is not affiliated with Relative Dimension in any official capacity whatsoever. Relative Dimension is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial 4.0 International License. You can share us, but please give us credit. The intro is Church Music from Sirenscape. The outro is Double Cross off the Shadowrun Return soundtrack used with permission from Hairbrain Schemes. And thank you to Sirenscape for the additional music and sound effects. You can find more information at sirenscape.com. If you would like to get in touch with the Relative Dimension, you can visit our website at relativedimension.com. You can contact us, email, at podcast at relativedimension.com. You can visit our Facebook at facebook.com slash relativedimensionpodcast. You can check us out on Twitter at RelativeDPod. 
You can check out our Patreon if you wish to support us at patreon.com slash relative dimension.